We want to give a big shout out to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring this video. I just visited their global headquarters in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and wow, this leading medical manufacturer has state-of-the-art workplaces, provides top pay, and even has a housing stipend for their interns. Learn more about how Stryker supports their employees who are in first by going to careers.stryker.com forward slash first. Um, hey, you know, one of the things uh, real quick during this break I want to point out, I didn't bring it up and I, I was going to and I, and I forgot to do so. Uh, there is a super cool uh, list. Uh, this is a site, not a list, but a site created yeah. from somebody on 1918. And I'm trying to remember, I, I PM'd her earlier uh, because this is really cool. I saw this up on Cheap Delphi. Uh, and if you haven't had a chance, go go take a look at this. I'll put the, I'm going to actually grab the link here because this is really cool. Uh, this visual dashboard that was created has just tons of data uh, in regards to um, how this all looks. Um, and you can search by teams, you can search by events. It's taking a lot of the uh, the data from the TBA uh, API. Uh, so really, really cool um, stuff. So uh, if you get a chance... Uh, to go look it up. It's from uh, Alicia. That's who it's from. Uh, Alicia in 1918 uh, created this. Um, but you can just type in, you know, highlight a certain team. Uh, like I'll just type in like 1678, for example. Um, and you can see like where they show up on the list specifically, um, what events they were at, that sort of, I don't know why I didn't highlight that time. That's okay. But if you type in certain events, it will show like, you know, where, where they were with their average auto scores or teleops and end games were. So super cool. Uh, go check yeah, this out. Cool. If, you, if you get an opportunity, lots of great data to crunch, uh, for all you data nerds out there. Yeah. Uh, and well. I also saw something that was really awesome, uh, on the blue line site. I don't know if it was there last year. I don't think it was, but the zebra motion works that they've added to some yeah. of the matches. It is insanely that cool is to watch. Well, yep. um, so I'm going to put a link in the chat to one of the matches that has one. Um, but just watching like, uh, like Jack in the bot, who we may, may talk about later mm -hmm. is a really, really fast robot. So just seeing their like little lines, like zip around the little field as it goes, was really, is really cool. Um, zebra motion is uh doing is really cool and i'm excited to see you know where it even, where it goes from here but i saw it and i was like wow this is like insanely awesome. i really like the auto tracking that was on yeah. it where like yes. for me if i was a team like i think i would be really be looking at that to see where your autos might conflict with what other teams uh have yeah. so i thought that was really really neat that justin i i think that's an awesome thing to bring up Absolutely. So while we move into our next spot, we're going to uh, give a big thank you to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring uh, this show. Uh, Stryker, guys, uh, awesome company that has stepped up. And really, they've stepped up for a big reason. They have people who are in first, who work at Stryker right now, who have awesome jobs, who get paid a butt ton of money, and who actually get to keep doing first freely. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you can't just skip work every day to do first, but uh, if you know some of the people that, that work for Stryker that do first, they really do support you in doing that. So if you're looking for a fantastic career uh, that supports you being in first, uh, internships, they'll cover your housing, they pay really well for it, careers, no matter where you are, intro career, later on, they have careers all around the world, headquartered in Kalamazoo, Michigan, but all around the world you can get things. Uh, go check out their Strikers Careers blog, or you can find out uh, more about how they support FIRST at careers.stryker.com forward slash FIRST. And thanks a lot to Striker uh, for keeping fun, loud, live, independent, because they're super cool with us doing what we do. And that's uh -huh. a big thing when we bring on sponsors is that we want sponsors that are going to, uh, we know are going to benefit the FIRST community, but then are also going to let us keep doing what we do and not say, thou shall say this and thou shall do it this way. <laughs> um, so that's that's why we really do like Striker because they're like, you know what, you guys do what you do. Uh, we, we just love, uh, we love FIRST and we love what you guys do for FIRST. So so big thanks to Striker uh, for all their support uh, here, especially on the FRC Top 25. Justin and Christine, I really got to ask you guys as uh, you're going to be attending events soon. Uh, big thing with power cells coming up with a lot of shortages coming up. We just heard from first that they're only planning on bringing 24 new power cells to events. And we're already seeing power cells ripped apart. I even heard that they might try doing some sort of adhesive to power cells potentially, which that might change things as well. So, Justin, going into you know your your events and looking at things, are are you going to just bring some power cells and have them as an offering, or what's what's the plan on thirty fifteen? Yeah, so we're uh, competing at Fair Lakes next week. Uh, we're very concerned about the power cell situation. We've seen, um, you know, obviously at our practice field, we have torn up balls, and we've seen what a torn up ball does in your intake and in your indexing system, whatever you've got, and going through your shooter. It's a very, it's a insane difference between a fresh ball yeah. uh, and a beat up ball. So we're very concerned about that. But um, I think first is is missing the boat. I think it would be so. And, and they might still do this, but I didn't. I don't. I haven't heard anything in the in the in the works. But they should just ask regional directors to ask teams that if you're willing to donate two, three, four, five balls to the regional um, or the district event, 
please do so. And that would be, you know, there's 60 teams coming up, or 50 teams. If each team brings two balls, that's 100 balls. Like, we're done. We're set. No, no one has to worry about it. Just replace the balls when you need to. Um, and I feel like as a first community, as first team, like, we would do that in a heartbeat. So I think it's a it's a solvable problem. I'm disappointed. They're like, yep, 24, we're kind of sticking with it. Hope we get more soon. Not really sure when. Um, but, you know, I mean, yeah, it's a it's a concern. I, but it's a, I think it's a solvable concern if we just put in some common sense. Uh, yeah. you, like, know, you don't want to so. solve it that way, but it's a way to solve it, no. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, in my opinion, you shouldn't ask, like, you know, teams shouldn't have to pone up their own money for the powers of spring yeah. events. But I agree with you, man. We that, like, pay so much. That, yeah. like, we, we need to solve paid, the problem. Yeah, we only paid five grand. Yeah. So, Christine, uh, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not fun. Uh, it's gonna <laughs> suck, but I can't imagine how much it costs like to just completely change out that many game pieces. But yeah. at the same time, I think people are gonna be able to make adjustments to their robots after competing at their first event, so they're not necessarily destroying balls. Like I think a big part of it too is like the driving over mm. game pieces, but maybe there will be less destruction by the time. I don't know. Week four. Just be like around? 2010 and make it a red card for driving over a ball. Oh, that, that worked out well until they totally no. changed it after <laughs> week one. So it's just like you know. I think each each, especially now with districts. I mean, we see like Festival uh, de Robotique. They have like like each districts and regionals will be run differently and actively. However, I mm-hmm. think gameplay. There should be some guarantee to the sim- the same um, opportunities in gameplay across. Uh, each and every event that is there and that is inside of first control. And I think that should be like when you sign up for this competition, just like any other sports competition, you always play with the same size uh, ball at a certain PSI. The field is always the same. It, everything is always the same. And I think it's just, it's, it needs to be tightened yeah. up a little bit. Yeah. Make, well, make it like unless, the XFL, you know, just bring your own. You um, use your own say, for each match. In New England and. Tom Brady, but yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, right. like I think the only comparable like game piece I can think of or game like element would be the Springs in 2017. It was like the never ending battle of trying to fix that. Not, not that it was a game piece, but it was something that the game piece had to constantly interact with. Like there was no useful like thing to do with the gear unless you could put it on the spring and have it get up to the human player. Yeah. So like thinking back to that, I think by like, week two or three they were able to come up with better solutions so i'm hoping that that happens with the ball what the hell did we do in 2006 i I don't remember i I don't think that like we were were so bad (laughs) i mean i I don't remember remember anything really being like they would get scuffed what what about 26 what about 2016 or 2012 yeah so 2016 like you were only allowed to hold one game piece where i think Mm, that was the big like the big differentiator like you did not have to like have more than one game piece interacting inside of your robot like we used a catapult that year because yeah even with every single like i just remember this huge whiteboard that had like over a thousand like tally marks on it because the kids were trying to figure out like how accurate a catapult stayed versus a shooter like after a ton of shots and like crappy balls and stuff and that was really the only consistent way that we could use a game piece regardless of the like state Same. of it. Mm-hmm. And another thing that's a little bit frustrating is, you know, we've spent, we just between tax shipping and stuff, we spent over 500 hours on power cells and we've bought, we bought two of the packs, two of the 24 packs at 200 and, you know, $30 each, whatever they are. So like, we're already put, we put a significant investment in like tuning our robot to these game pieces. And then, for the for the possibility of going to an event where they should have nice fresh balls like that, that we've invested in ourselves, mm-hmm. um, you know, not having that at the event is is really uh, frustrating. But you know, mm-hmm. we, we all have to deal with it. It's not like some teams have fresh balls and some teams don't. We'll yeah. all you know we all have to deal with it. So we'll see. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now thanks to all of our co-executive producers on patreon and tier 2 plus subscribers on twitch keeping fun loud live and independent